Hey, Michael, it's great to see you again. It's uh, great to be here with you. Thanks for inviting me onto your podcast. Yeah, it's just wonderful to have you uh, with us today. And, you know, a, a big topic today all around delegation. And it's something all entrepreneurs, you know, come to these different areas of their business and their career where they have to let things go. And uh, I thought it'd be a great topic to get into today and appreciate, always appreciate your wisdom on this kind of stuff. Uh, what, what's your thought here today? Uh, uh, delegation is, is vital. Unless you know how to delegate, you can't grow your business because uh, there's a limit to how many hours there are in a day and there's a limit to how much you can do. And also when you're doing all of it, odds are half of it you're doing really poorly. So it's yeah. uh, delegation is a, a key to being successful in my mind. Yeah, I agree. I like what you said there too about there's only you know so many hours in the day. And uh, I think Dean Jackson uh, has sort of a line in that idea that it's like you can't buy more hours in a day. And that's uh, such an important piece here is, you know, the, our listeners mostly are leaders and entrepreneurs. And it's like we get tied up with time constraints and we want to have more, but you can't buy more. Right. So, right. you know, that's where the delegation piece really comes in. Yeah, I think the other thing, too, about hours is just having the you know whatever for you is the right balance. You know, entrepreneurs go, great, I'm, if I'm awake for, you know, 18 hours, I can work for 15 of them. Well, I, you're not going to be very productive. You know? so exactly. It's really how many productive work hours do I have and how many hours do I have for regenerating and taking care of myself and doing all the things, other things I say are important. Because we got into being an entrepreneur and running our own business for it to serve us and so we can do things that we want to do. And if we don't know how to delegate, the business will consume you. You won't have time for anything else. Boy, tell me. I think, you know, there's so many people that I've talked to that have felt that way in their entrepreneurial careers. And how, what are some of the things that you would sort of guide people into, you know, starting to delegate? And how, for people that really just have never, there's a lot of people out there that just refuse or, or don't know how to kind of let things go. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the first thing is to probably look at things that you don't enjoy doing or you know you don't do well. Those are probably the first things to delegate away if you can. Yeah. And if you don't have someone on your team, there's all sorts of opportunities now for virtual assistants and virtual people and Upwork and all these different companies that you can delegate to people that are really good at doing the thing that you don't do well. And... Uh, I think also in delegating, you've got to be patient. You know, the first time you delegate something to someone, they will not do it as well as you and they won't do it as quickly as you would do. So you fall into the trap of, well, it'll just be faster if I do it myself. Yeah, maybe this one time. But if you look at it doing another 50 times, you know what, if you train someone and within five times of them doing it, they're doing it faster than you then guess what? You've just freed up a huge amount of your time. So it's having some patience and letting the people you delegate to learn. You yeah, know, I like to get it perfect. I like the idea of patience. And I think that's one of the things that's that's lacking for a lot of entrepreneurs too, right? We tend yeah. to want to just kind of get things done, right? And uh, there's a certain mindset around that, that you just kind of have to give yourself some time to make this happen because in the long term, it's going to be actually a better thing, right? Yeah, and the other reason you've got to give some time to let it happen is is if you're just starting to delegate, you're not very good at it. Yeah, that's you know, a great so point. So not only are, you, are, are the people you're delegating to, they have to get up to speed. You're probably not going to be hitting it out of the park being like excellent at being able to delegate because you're not used to it. So you've got to give yourself time to do it better as well. You know, yeah. How do I delegate well is a good thing to look at. And, and what would you suggest there for somebody who's not used to delegating? Like what would be a tip or two that you could sort of share with us here on somebody who's starting into that? And what, what, what could you do to delegate better? Well, I, I think one of the key things to do to delegate better is, is know that it's going to take some time. Uh, yeah. And I would uh, sit down with the person, be clear on what you're delegating, why you're delegating it, what's the purpose, why is it important? Uh, and then to write out the criteria of this is what this successful delegation will look like. This yeah. is how the clients are going to feel. This is how my customers are going to feel when they come into my into the store. 
this is what the end output looks like and take time to show them how to do it and to answer their questions. Uh, and that's yeah. the start. You know, yeah. just, just have clarity of communication about what you want and how it gets done. Don't start just with walk the, by, dump it in their hands and assume that they know what to do. Yeah, start with uh, laying it out with the purpose in mind, right? Yeah. For them so that they can see the benefit of, of what it is. I like that. I like that. What, um, what sort of things do you find when you're working with um, and coaching entrepreneurs through are some of the things, some of the challenges that they have in delegating? Like what are some of the harder things that you're finding um, that people just really don't want to delegate? Um, well, they may not want to delegate things that are a bit more personal to them or financial because uh, yeah. they want to sort of keep it close to the chest, and, and that's understandable. So start with the easy stuff, things that aren't like that, and then, then you build trust with someone over a period of time, and you can start to release more of those other things where they can see more about you or more about the business. I think that's that's one of them. And, and I think the other thing around delegating, and this is something that I was guilty of when I started delegating, is that I would leave it on my desk until the last possible moment when it had to get done because I've been ignoring it. And then I delegated someone and they had no time to do it properly because I'm the guy that kept it too long, right? So yeah. delegate early. Yeah, you were, you were the bottleneck and, and then it just, it could have got, you could have delegated that earlier and made it happen and it would have been done by the time you even got to looking at it, right? Yeah, yeah I, I would tend to, del I call it delegating uh, in the flavor of being a Canada goose. Um, so Canada goose eats a whole lot of grass and a whole lot comes out the back end. Yeah. And so I would tend to fly in like a Canada goose, leave a whole bunch of messes on people's desks to delegate and fly out, assuming everything's going to be lovely. <laughs> it wasn't, didn't work out that way. Yeah, that's great. So through, through all of those transactions and times that you did that, how, how did you refine that? so that you you became a better delegator through your years and experience? Well, one of the things uh, that I learned uh, through the strategic coach is there's different levels of delegation. And that to me was a key thing to get. Yeah. You know, one of them is I'm going to delegate this to you, but I want you to go away, think about it and come back to me before you take any action at all because I want to talk about what you're going to do. Another is I'm going to delegate this to you, be clear about what I want, and I want you to report back weekly or daily or whatever how it's going until it's completed. The next level is I'm going to delegate it to you. Tell me when it's done. And the fourth is I'm going to delegate this to you and I never want to see this thing again. You just <laughs> take care of it ongoingly every time it shows up. And uh, I think that getting clarity on what kind of delegation, then it, it gives real clarity on the outcome and certainty about what's going to happen. Yeah, I like that. The parameters around the different levels of delegation. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that's that's an awesome way to look at things. And, you know, starting with that that one where you have a minor amount of of involved or uh, where they have a minor amount of involvement right up to where they own the whole project. Right. Exactly. That's cool. You know, and I think the other thing I've, I've learned is is when you delegate to people, uh, you need to be available to them. Uh, be available for support, guidance, just answering a question. Uh, and so you're not sort of giving it to them and then they're sinking or swimming. You know, help yeah. them out. Help them be successful because the more you can make them successful, the more successful you'll be. Yeah, I love that. Love that. I know um, Dan and uh, Benjamin Hardy. Yep. Um, Dan, Dan and Benjamin Hardy just wrote a book recently called Who Not How. And essentially that was sort of all around this idea too of, of delegating, right? You don't need to know how to do it. You just need to know who can help you get through that. Um, yeah. what's, your, what's your sort of take on that? Well, I love that book. Uh, the concept of Who Not How is one of Dan's, he has a lot of brilliant concepts. That one is gotta be one of the top five. And what I love about it is that if, if you've got stuff that like sitting on your, your desk, However, your desk is whether it's your computer, your desk, or whatever it might be. And you're holding on to it because you don't know how to do it. Well, if you don't know how to do it, you're not the person to be doing it. So you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it, or you can just go find someone that already knows how to do it and let them take it on. And so it's really about what are the things that, you're, that you know how to do that you're good at, 
that's what you are a who for your own those things yeah and those other ones that you're questioning how go find somebody else that already knows go get the expert like don't 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 try and reinvent the wheel I like that. I, I, I was, as you were saying, sort of laying around in your desk and all that sort of stuff, I was thinking you could use that for your email inbox too, right? The anyway. very same sort of way. It's like if stuff sitting in your, in your email inbox and you're, you just haven't got to it yet, it's probably because you need to delegate it. Need to del You're not good at it. You're procrastinating at it for some reason. Yeah. It's in your inbox. You know, for me, it sits on my Trello over and over yeah. again every week when I look at it, it's still there. Well, there's a reason. And there the is. reason is I'm not the person to be doing it in the first place. Right. I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I, you and I both use Trello. It's a great tool. And, and, you know, from those perspectives, you kind of look at that. And the nice thing about using some of those tools is that it, it primes the pump for delegation, right? right? When you have those tools and you see it's in your, that kind of stuff's in your face, it's like, okay, well, I haven't got to this. So now I need to make that sort of decision to go ahead and delegate it and move it ahead because we become our own bottlenecks, right? Right. Yeah. You know, the other great thing about delegating well is it builds the strength of your team. You know, yeah. it lets them rise up to be the best that they can. Yeah. One of the things that I love doing is going to my team and going, okay, so you see all the things that I do. What do I do to think that you think you could take off my plate? And with training and some time, you'd be able to do it as good as or better than me. What do you want to take off of my desk? Like that. And then I give it to them. Yeah, give them the opportunity, right? Yeah, they can say, well, I could do that. Oh, good. Well, then I'm going to give it to you. Nice. Yeah, and nice. That's, that's a great way to start to free up stuff. It's amazing what people are willing to if you give them the option. They go, yeah, I'd love to do that. I go, great, because I hate it. That's why I, <laughs> I still have it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Well, I appreciate all this chat on delegation today. I think it's just a wonderful conversation. And, you know, what I'd like to do uh, here, Michael, before we sort of wrap up is to let everybody know how to get a hold of you. And if they want to reach out to you and, and tell them about how they can find Michael Reddy. Sure. Uh, the easiest way to find me is uh, send me an email, mm -hmm. which is Michael at redvestcorp.com so r-e-d-v-e-s-t c-o-r-p.com awesome awesome yeah. well thanks so much and i appreciate you spending some time with us here today talking all about delegation and really look forward to uh, having another chat with you real soon michael my pleasure Love all to. right thank you thank you peter